most of the time the way that things happen is that i will write the music for a song vocals and guitar kind of thing and i will have ideas about the arrangement beyond that but the guys in the band will contribute um in this instance there, there have never been a few in the past the the central piano riff of the song was actually written by matt uh who, matt nazir who plays keys in the band and it was one of it, it was his like sound check piano riff for a while and most of what matt plays is depeche mode um <laughs> and uh I kind of got to the point where I assumed it was a Depeche Mode riff that I, I'm not super familiar with Depeche Mode, I'll be honest with you. And um, just one day I was like, what is that song? And he was like, oh, it's just a, a thing that I wrote. And I was like, you're fucking kidding. I was like, that sounds like a, that sounds like a classic old song to me. Do you know what I mean? It sounds like a, it's a fully formed piece of music. Um, yeah. And I was like, let's fucking use it. And he was like, okay. Um, so... Uh, so, you know, he sent me kind of uh, a recording of him playing it because, of course, we're now in the lockdown. So I started kind of fucking around with it at that point. Um, and, and the rest of the song came together from there. Um, there was a different ending to the song for a while that didn't make any sense. And I, I rewrote the ending while we were in the studio, actually, which was um, which was fun. Um, and uh, um, uh, so, you know, the music sort of came together. And then for the lyrics for that one, um, the central image is um charles dickens when charles dickens was a young journalist he arrived in london and he had a business card that said charles dickens resurrectionist in search of a subject um and at the time resurrectionist meant body snatcher as well um so uh and that just resonated with me and but the thing was like i so i had that and i was i couldn't quite put my finger on what the song was about but i knew that that was powerful to me and um i have endless notes right uh for lyrical ideas and they're generally quite often they're like one line maybe two that are just scattered around and some of them you pick one and it blossoms into song in it to itself but i got to a point where i had this almost like a folder of just like bits and bobs that hadn't ended up anywhere else and then i started kind of piecing them together specifically with each other without sort of cross-referencing as a collage almost do you know what i mean yeah. and suddenly in the midst of all of this realized that there was a holistic picture emerging that was what i wanted to talk about so for example i've had the line in 1981 i was perfect for a month in a notebook for a long time and i think it's a fucking banger um but then there's a lot of intertextuality going on whoa all you pharisees and motherfuckers is an elvis line that's what he said when he walked on stage in vegas for the first time um we are no longer all of a company was what francis drake said to his crew when they mutinied off the coast of brazil um <clears throat> uh we're searching for food in toy shops and gunsmiths is a tolstoy line that's from the introduction to uh, uh war and peace i think actually um and so, so there's a lot of kind of disparate modernist kind. yeah right. I, I, I'm, I'm trying not to use the word intertextuality because i think it's pretentious but <clears throat> that is what i'm talking about um so and and i just started kind of stapling all of this together and then the the final ingredient was that i and i sort of stumbled across it but i have a the song i knew proof before i got famous that lists a bunch of my friends who were the bar staff of nambuka in 2007 and I brought them into it, and that was the moment when I realized what the song was about, which is that we're a group of people who lived what I would call a Kerouac youth. Uh, we were young and beautiful and invincible, and we never, ever, ever went to bed. Um, and now we all live in the suburbs and pushing 40, and people are having kids. And it's just like, um, hmm, like, how does that feel? And what's that about? And what are we still searching for? But ultimately, the, the final effect of the song for me, there are a few songs in my catalog that I find it quite difficult to explain in a short sentence what they're about which I think is a good thing because if I could, then I wouldn't need to write the song. You know what I mean? And I feel like this is one of these, it's, it's a pretty sort of indistinct feeling that I'm trying to capture on it. And I like to think that I caught it.